Hello and welcome to Healthline 3. I'm Terry Simmons. Today we're talking with Dr. Greg Phillips of Women's Health Clinic with Willis Knight and South. We're going to be talking about diet and exercise in pregnancy and also postpartum. We'll be taking your calls throughout the show and as a reminder, please make sure you're in a quiet room with your TV turned down all the way so we can hear your questions. And the number to call is 318-219-4569 and you'll see it a little bit later and as the show goes on at the bottom of your screen. Dr. Phillips, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. We are so appreciative that you're here, and I love that we're talking about this topic. Mm -hmm. We're going to be busting some myths. We're going to be letting people know if they are pregnant, they're thinking about being mm -hmm. pregnant postpartum, they've exactly. got their baby, all of these wonderful things about exercise and taking care of yourself. So you want to start with the myths? Great, yeah. I know we've discussed the myths this morning, but yet yeah, a lot of times people will say, oh, I'm pregnant now, so I have to, uh, you know, eat this many fruits and this many vegetables and stay away from spicy foods and I can't eat fish or crawfish and, and those myths are all false. Uh, fish actually has a lot of omega fatty acids which is good for brain neurotrophic development and the baby. Um, you know people worry about mercury and they say well catfish and crawfish are bad and they're really not. You worry about mercury in those, those larger fish as they accumulate it over time and so as long as you don't eat a bunch of tuna steaks every day which most people don't we're going to be fine. Um, I think another myth is um, eating for two, and we, we hear that a lot. Um, and one of the main issues we have in pregnancy is uh, monitoring weight gain in patients. Uh, and we want patients to be, to gain enough weight for the baby to grow well um, and to be healthy in their pregnancy, but not to gain too much that they increase their chances for gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, delivery complications. Um, so if they could know that they only need to eat about three or 400 more calories than a normal diet. So if you normally eat 1800 calories, bump it up by three or 400 and you should be a-okay. So it's really fun to hear that. We've all heard that eating for two mm -hmm. and sometimes it's like as an excuse to do it, but then they're always worry. It wasn't always like I'm eating for two. Sometimes we yeah. didn't know if that was really true. Is the baby getting everything mm -hmm. that he or she needs? We just don't know. Is there something that we could eat that is good for us, but might not be good for the baby? So, that's a great question. Um, most of the time people worry about things that are in their common everyday diet. And when they, a lot of women will say, well, I guess I can't eat sushi now. Well, you can. What do you think they do in Japan when they're pregnant? They eat sushi. Um, here, though, it's more of the crawfish seafood, which is good for both mom and baby. And it's just the idea. Um, I think one issue is People eat a ve vegan or vegetarian diet, mm -hmm. they're very concerned. People tell them, oh, well, you can't do that in pregnancy. You have to eat meat for the protein. And that's also not true. As long as you're getting sources of protein for the baby, you can still eat your preferred diet um, and your baby's going to get all the nutrients they need. Maybe you supplement with some vitamins every now and then um, or just a daily prenatal and that should be just fine. Well, and I love that that question came up because it's mm -hmm. one of the things that I understand and I know that you do particularly and you care and it's all this individual so that's mm -hmm. one of those questions that someone like I myself should bring that to you about me specifically right, what correct. do you with telling my talking to my doctor mm -hmm. if I want to eat this and I think it's good for me what do you think as far as my individual case mm -hmm. and that's really what it's all about and that's why we're here talking about that there are no general these are called myths now there's mm -hmm. no one general so what guidelines and recommendations do we go by as far as exercise and taking care of ourselves when we're pregnant so exercise in pregnancy, the recommendations from both our, our kind of governing body of OBGYNs and pediatricians both say um, it's very sounds very complicated. 150 minutes a week and two episodes of strenuous activity. And what does that mean? Well, okay, what it really means is about 30 minutes a day of moderate intensity exercise. Um, okay, well, what's moderate intensity? Well, whatever you can do to increase your heart rate and maybe start sweating a little bit. Those, that's what you want to do. So how do you know it's moderate? Well, if you can still talk, but your heart rate's up and you can carry a conversation, you're, you're doing great. Um, and that will change as you progress through your pregnancy. You know, people who are in their first trimester are going to be in a lot different situation than those who are in their third trimester. However, my favorite thing to tell people is, look, if you've been working out a lot, um, if you're comfortable and accustomed to this routine, keep doing that. Just be aware that as you progress through your pregnancy, you may have to modify a few things. And don't feel like you have to be sedentary throughout your pregnancy and you have to give up all these um, successes and these gains you've made throughout your, your habit and your practice of exercising. Now, conversely, 
I have patients who come in and say, well, I've never worked out a day in my life, but now I'm pregnant and I want to get healthy. What do I do? And it's intimidating. Uh, I think that's a problem. Going to gyms, you look around and everyone seems to know what they're doing. And, and you're here like, well, I'm pregnant now. I'm clumsy because I've got this belly. What do I do? It's easy. Five minutes a day. If you can start with five minutes a day in every week, increase by five minutes. Eventually you'll get up to your 30 minute threshold that we would prefer. Um, and you're gonna notice you're gonna feel better, you're gonna have more energy, more stamina, you're gonna be able to have that evening dinner with the family, you'll be able to pick up the kids from school and play with them in the afternoons. Um, and you're just going to enjoy that pregnancy a lot better and also decrease your risk for some of the, the things that we worry about when we monitor during pregnancy. That's such good advice and cool. so refreshing, I'm sure, for our viewers to hear. Because also, isn't it important not to compare yourself to other people? Because sometimes we'll see uh, people who have done aerobics are really hard running up mm -hmm. until they deliver. And that's them, and you, you need to pay attention to what you can do. Absolutely, and I, and I think, unfortunately with social media, and, I, and we did say, yeah, Google, look these things up, see what you should be doing, um, and then come talk to me. Yeah, don't fall in the trap of what other people are doing. This is your family, this is your pregnancy, you're growing it the way that you need to grow it. Um, and as long as you're doing the things that are healthy, and that are progressing your health and increasing your chances of success for a healthy delivery and a healthy postpartum, that's, that's fantastic. You're doing your best. And I tell my patients a lot, do your best to do your best. That's all you can do, okay? So if you're, if you're trying, if you're doing your five minutes and that's all you can do, great. Next week you might be able to do 10 and then we'll build from there. And you're gonna notice that you feel better, you feel stronger, and you're more confident throughout your pregnancy. Right. And, and certainly in postpartum because one of the main things we see in postpartum is depression and you know it's you've got these body changes and you're not sleeping and you're scared to death because you've never raised a kid and you don't know what you're doing exercise is a great way and it's one thing that I use exercise for is just it improves mental health it decreases depression certainly postpartum depression and so it just helps you have an outlet for your stress for your anxiety that's healthy and it doesn't have to be complicated it can be very simple like go outside and walk. Sometimes if my patients just get out of their house, get some sunshine on their face and take a walk, it's great. Guess what? It's, it's pretty cheap and you can do it with your partner. You can put your baby in the stroller. You can all be together as a family. Just kind of walk around your neighborhood. Shreveport has some great parks. You can walk around parks. You can see people. I think our patients a lot of times just feel isolated during their pregnancy and their postpartum and that increases that depression. So to have a reason to get outside, a reason to engage with people, whether it's at a gym or at a park, um, it's going to give you those dual benefits of social mental health and just physical mental health. It is, it's so yeah. important. And I'm sure, do you find that with some of your patients? Like they, oh, they do feel isolated. Sometimes they feel like I'm the only one. I know other people have done it, but I'm the only one that's been pregnant. You tend to feel like you're, you're the only one who knows what you're going through. Right, and so, and I, I think that's another myth that we should bust right now. Yeah. And that's the, okay, you had a baby, now you have to stay home for six weeks and you can't go out and you can't do anything. Oh my goodness. I, I hope the dads aren't listening, but every time a patient comes to me for a six week or a two week checkup, I say, okay, listen, your appointment went really fast. Don't go home. Tell them it took an hour or two and just go to Starbucks and read your phone and, and have Perfect. a coffee. It's anything just to kind of help you take a breath, consider what this amazing thing you just did. You just, you just grew and birthed a human. It's amazing. So <laughs> celebrate that, but also like take care of yourself too. Right, and I think that's another thing that, you know, mothers and potential mothers and anyone, you forget that what's really going on mm -hmm. is this huge miracle. This yeah. this human is being formed inside. You're doing a real good thing just doing it. Just, I, it's I can't a big do deal. It. <laughs> right, <laughs> but you can sure help us do it. That's and right. I, I think it goes a long way. Your whole concept of, you know, understanding and acceptance and just mm -hmm. really getting into what a woman is going through mm -hmm. um, with this and, and not worrying about it. It's really individual. Really don't think that just because even if no one has ever exercised during pregnancy before, sure. you can. And to follow your intuition, right? Do you think mm -hmm. that follow your gut on what you want to do and if you feel like getting up and moving, it doesn't have to be a big workout and don't beat yourself up if it was a casual five minutes walking around, at least you were moving? Mm -hmm. Sure, and I, and I think we need to understand too that if you didn't complete your YouTube workout video or if you didn't go to the gym for the full hour or if you didn't hit your five miles or whatever your your milestones or your 
your goals are, it's okay. You got up and you moved. And I think for some of my patients, I've had a patient run a marathon pregnant <laughs> and I've had a patient teach aerobics, but like I said, I've had patients who come in and say, I've never worked out a day in my life. And so obviously my goal as a, as a practitioner, as a provider, is to help shepherd them through like, where are you and what can I do to help you the most? How can we do this successfully? And how can you deliver this baby? I, I have all these sayings. Another saying is I got two goals in this pregnancy, healthy baby, healthy mama. And I don't really care how we get there as long as we get there. And so that means maybe yours is five minutes of walking a day. Maybe yours is, yeah, keep going to the fitness center and you know, hitting the treadmill, uh, whatever it is for you. It's great. As long as you're active, as long as your, your diet is meeting your needs and your goals, it's fine. So what should you do as far as weight gain? Exercise and pregnancy can keep your weight gain down, but it's not going to cause you to, to lose weight. Typically a normal weight woman should gain about 25 to 35 pounds. And that's normal. Um, a woman who's overweight when she starts a pregnancy at 15 to 20. And then those women who are underweight are very thin when they start pregnancy, whether they're athletic or not, we use typically want to see them gain between 30 and 40 pounds. So yes, again, each patient has their own needs and their own criteria. And that's our goal and our job is to help them do that successfully and in a healthy way. Okay. And that's such, again, another good thought to, to, mm -hmm. to put in, to plant that seed with anyone thinking about this or going through this. What did, we talked about the person who hadn't exercised very much at mm -hmm. all, and now they want to really take care of themselves, but they don't want to overdo it. So mm -hmm. they want to just moderately just give, or some people jump in mm -hmm. and, and do it and then have to pull back. And another way they beat themselves up. What about the woman who is hardcore working out like crazy? She finds herself pregnant yeah. and then do you find that that also can set in kind of a depression or a worry that, or a concern mm -hmm. that I can't just pound it as hard as I can because now I'm pregnant? Yeah. So we, uh, <laughs> those elite athletes, they're 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 a different breed, and yeah. I and I when I where I work out, there's a lot of um, very active, very fit women, and they're just super competitive. Yeah. And it's, and what one of my goals is to say like, look healthy baby, healthy mama. We don't have to win this pregnancy. We just have to do that. And as long as we get that, it doesn't matter if you deliver vaginally or by C-section at 40 weeks or at 30, it doesn't, that doesn't matter. We want you to have a healthy baby, healthy pregnancy. So those women who are, who are strenuously exercising prior to pregnancy and want to continue that, they can do that. Olympic athletes, um, Serena Williams, all these people have worked out and played sports and, and competed in their respective fields successfully throughout pregnancies and postpartum. Now, what they need to realize is we have to monitor our temperature. We don't want you getting completely overheated. Mm -hmm. You have to monitor your nutrition because obviously if you're pregnant and exercising at an elite level, you're going to have different nutritional requirements. And then all of us all also, you have to be careful during pregnancy because of those physiologic changes. That just means the changes your body naturally goes through we're going to have to be a little bit more cautious of our safety and the modifications we implement to to prevent injury and to continue to help us be successful in our endeavors working out pregnancy health overall right and it's a good thing i love all your sayings and it's beautiful that you <laughs> could just go right back because in my mind already every time you've been talking about it i keep thinking well go back to healthy baby healthy yeah, mama that's happy it. you know whatever it takes mm -hmm. just to be healthy and just trust that it's all going to be okay mm -hmm. it's good if your focus is on just staying as healthy as you can mm -hmm. and is it true that the healthier the pregnancy the uh, more healthy and possibly easier the delivery will be yeah no that's absolutely true and, and studies have proven that so Here's another saying for you. The best time to start exercising is before you get pregnant. Right. And the second best time is right now, as soon as you can. Right. And so I think what we've seen through the data is that women who exercise before or during their pregnancy have decreased uh, risk or instances of gestational diabetes, um, large babies during delivery, which um, decreases chances for successful and safe vaginal deliveries and increases chances for C-section. Um, it decreases the risk for preeclampsia, which is a high blood pressure condition in pregnancy. Um, it improves uh, their ability to, to maintain working 
and family dynamics. Um, they have less sick days, less generalized pain. Um, they typically bounce back faster uh, after delivery. So, and think about it, if, if you can bounce back with your health faster during postpartum, well, you're going to be that much more prepared to diminish those depressive symptoms and those, um, those fears and anxieties from a new baby and the lack of sleep that comes along with that. Yeah, so just stay healthy. Don't yeah. worry about weight or anything and realize that yeah. your body is different. It's going mm -hmm. to be changing. Mm -hmm. It's going to, and forevermore, it's just sure. changing. There are yeah. things, let's talk and about that. And that's fine. Yeah. yeah, and how wonderful. Absolutely. I mean, of course it's going to change. Yeah. You're, you weren't a mother before. Now you're a mm -hmm. mother and your body mm -hmm. has created, you know, helped create this this other human, yeah. there's changes in the body that have to adapt to that. Sure. So you wanna talk about the changes that the body goes through? Yeah, so one of the, one of the most common, and we've been talking about this today, one of the most common things we see is weight gain. So when you gain weight in pregnancy, the majority of it is in the front, it's the belly. And so what that will do is cause some, some problems with your uh, balance, your center of gravity. And so I tell a lot of my pregnant ladies, okay, listen, if you were a trail runner, if you were a biker, um, if you were a climber or whatever your thing is, you may not be able to do that. We may need to go from the trail to the sidewalk. We may need to go from the treadmill to the elliptical, uh, the bike to the stationary bike. And these are all healthy exercises. Or you may need to go to the pool and you may need to do some water aerobics or some water fitness things just to, to relieve some of the stress and strain on your body from the extra weight and the extra positioning of the weight. Uh, another thing is there's this hormone called progesterone. It's running all through the pregnant woman's body. And one thing it does is it relaxes ligaments. And those are what holds your bones and your joints together, right? And the goal of it is to help your pelvis relax so that we can successfully accommodate a baby. However, that hormone is very nonspecific. So it loosens your hips and your knees and your ankles and your shoulders. And that's why my poor 25 year old women sound like they've been around a few more decades when they get them to go to the bathroom at night because they're popping and cracking. and. <laughs> and having all this discomfort, you know, that can't sleep on my hip because it hurts. And, and so our athletes or our patients need to realize that you've got to really be careful. If you want to continue to have a healthy, active pregnancy, you just got to be aware of these subtle things that are going to um, improve or um, just cause you to have to approach life differently now. But that's fine. Now, postpartally, um, I think breastfeeding is the biggest issue with exercising. We talked about earlier, three or 400 calories a day is all you really need to increase over your normal diet for pregnancy. It's the same in breastfeeding. So if you wanna breastfeed, you can successfully do that uh, with another three or 400 calories. Well, the problem is the breasts get larger, so you really have got to support that because you can't jog when you're engorged and it's very uncomfortable. And so you just have to kind of think about these things in advance. And, and the more we can talk about these things in dialogue with one another throughout the pregnancy and the postpartum, um, the better off the patients can be, and the more primed for success they're gonna be. And that's really good, and I'm glad we're talking now about the mm -hmm. postpartum, yeah. if you're ready to kind of talk about that sure. now. So that's a really good thing, too, another myth. Mm -hmm. Also, and then women say, I'm gonna keep breastfeed as long as I can because yeah. I'm losing weight. Well, yeah. uh, you know, that's the way to get back into shape, mm -hmm. and they say that the uterus even contracts while you're mm -hmm. breastfeeding. Is that true? Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So. The hormone we, we give, the Pitocin, the drip, the people call mm -hmm. it, um, it's, it's a, an artificial form of the hormone oxytocin. And so when you're breastfeeding, that hormone is released from the brain and it does cause your uterus to contract, which can decrease how much you bleed. It can um, help the uterus go back to a normal size uh, because obviously the uterus has grown to well above your belly button, sometimes up to your ribs. Uh, by the time you're done with your pregnancy. And yeah, and so by the time you're over your pregnancy, you want that to kind of shrink down as fast as you can. Now, yes, breastfeeding takes a, an incredible amount of calories. And so that's why we say continue your healthy diet, um, but throw some extra calories in there. You know, some of my patients who have trouble gaining weight or have trouble maintaining a supply, a couple of things, hydrate. Hydration is important during pregnancy, after pregnancy, certainly if you're breastfeeding. Um, good calorie intake. I remember my wife sitting on the couch eating ice cream during breastfeeding because she thought this was the greatest thing ever. She could <laughs> almost eat without, but again, you're not eating for two. You're not trying to feed two people from your body. Um, but the fact that the body can do that is amazing. And so again, we want to encourage our patients to do that. 
If you can't or you choose not to, that's okay. But just remember, you don't need that extra three or 400 calories again. Because again, we talk about mood and depression and, and that inability to get the weight off postpartum is, is a big factor in those things. And so if you're continuing that three or 400 extra calories a day, you're going to have a harder time losing the baby weight. Um, so if we can just kind of make that clear that no, it's totally fine, it's totally safe to breastfeed and exercise or to not breastfeed and, and have a very healthy baby in postpartum. We would love for everyone to breastfeed, but it's just not in the cards for everyone. And, and there should be no guilt or shame with right. that. It should be supported and, and to have a baby is an amazing thing. And to feed them from your body, great. But if you can't, you still have a baby who's amazing and it's a wonderful thing for your family. So. It, it really bums me out when my patients get get upset because they can't breastfeed. Um, so yeah, I, I always try to encourage them. Like, it's fine. We're gonna be fine. We're still got a healthy baby. Yeah. We're winning. And it's one of the things going back again to the individual mm -hmm. mom and baby. This is you, and it's yeah. totally. It's just part of it. There's no mm -hmm. judgment either way. Right. It is interesting how uh, breastfeeding the nat the baby naturally because. Uh, forever that's the way it's been and mm -hmm. sometimes you know back in the day that was the only way to right. feed a newborn baby mm -hmm. so it's natural that the baby would take that and the body would take that mm -hmm. signal to get in shape to take care of everything because yeah. the baby's out here now we mm -hmm. gotta take care of it right but also the same thing if it, you decide not to mm -hmm. or you can't for some reason mm -hmm. it's it's also it opens you up for all the other things this is how you're going to do it mm -hmm. these are the freedoms that you have now to mm -hmm. take care of your baby mm -hmm. there's no limits there's all kinds of ways and you can zoom into exercising right. again and it's a way to take care of yourself so it's just different it's not mm -hmm. better or worse for exactly. either yeah yeah I, I think um, so many times I see my patients who have gone through a pregnancy gone through the delivery the postpartum period they'll breastfeed for six months to a year and when they finally stop I'll say how do you feel and they're like oh my god I finally have my body back and it's like yeah congrats <laughs> I mean you you did this huge thing um, however what we we still want um, what women want is to is to kind of have ownership and autonomy over themselves and they give up some of that for their pregnancy and their postpartum and that's okay for a time but at some point I want my patients to, to be back to themselves and really kind of own their lives and, and do what they want to do and enjoy that while still raising a family and doing a great job at it. Which is the whole point of yeah. everything that yeah. you do and that you bring to us today and, and all the time. And again, if anyone would like to call in with specific questions for Dr. Phillips, it's great in the middle of this conversation. Whether you're thinking about having a baby, whether you are pregnant or you're postpartum, you've got your baby right there and you have questions. Or it could even be maybe your baby has grown up a little bit and you still have some questions. Yeah. It definitely doesn't mm -hmm. have to be with an infant in the house because um, it never stops and your body has changed forever. Mm -hmm. So you may have a five or six year old or maybe you've decided to have another one and mm -hmm. you want to know. So you you have had one baby mm -hmm. and you decide to have another one what about the changes from there from okay how does that work so when you get pregnant with your second or your third or whatever we we try to delicately say my patients will often say I don't remember this for the first time <laughs> and we'll delicately say well you're a little older so we have to understand that we we've got a few years under our belt and that's okay um, but the other thing is some of those ligaments and the support structures that we stretched and used from the, in that pelvic floor that we used from the last pregnancy and delivery, well, they, they are already ready to stretch and relax. And so what we'll see is I say, listen, here's the deal. You're gonna show sooner, you're gonna carry lower, you're gonna have more pelvic pressure, and you're just gonna generally be more uncomfortable. <laughs> and that's okay. Now, again, exercise, diet, coming into that second or third or fourth pregnancy healthy is only going to improve your chances of having a more comfortable pregnancy. Now, of course, there are physical therapy, uh, there are other management ways we can do to help you get through these things, especially if you have specific issues, we can work through that. And I think one thing that women overlook so much in their life, let alone in pregnancy, postpartum, and looking towards the uh, next pregnancy is pelvic floor strengthening. So similar to you wanna strengthen your core, you wanna strengthen your legs, you know, your muscle, you still need to strengthen your pelvic floor because that helps with incontinence and delivery and recovery and sexual function. And so 
having a healthy pelvic floor, whether you're doing Kegel exercises or whether you've Googled pelvic PT exercises, because that's a thing. Right. We do have pelvic physical therapists and they do both external and internal treatments. And so they're available in town. And so we can obviously or easily refer you to those ladies um, to help you kind of recover or um, get ready for the next round. Yeah, so those are, that's what I was going to say. That's even if it's good to do if you might not ever have another baby. But th those are really exercises that back in the day, mm -hmm. women didn't know to right. go ahead and do that, yeah. that you can do that. They just thought, well, it's done. That's mm -hmm. the way it is. It's just mm -hmm. going to be that way forever. But you can retrain your body and build that core and mm -hmm. the pelvic floor, strengthen it again mm -hmm. for all kinds of other reasons, not just another birth. Absolutely. Yeah, and it yeah. functions in all kinds of ways. Yeah, So, and that's the thing. So our patients who've completed childbearing, they're, they're they've had their family um, and they don't want to do that anymore. Absolutely, pelvic floor strengthening is really important because you know, one thing that happens as we age is we have, um, you know, you have that vaginal dryness from menopause, the urinary incontinence. And so a lot of women will, will kind of pull away from society. Well, I don't want to laugh at church or I don't want to go exercise at the gym because I'm going to wet myself. And so for us to be able to have that conversation and talk and say, okay, look, you're going to have babies. We can work on this. We can fix this. There are ways to help you. We're, we're happy to do that because again, like our slogan is live healthier, live happier, live longer. That's what we want to do for all of our patients. And so for us to be able to just engage in that conversation, and hopefully we've built this rapport throughout yes. our, our relationship together. Um, I think our patients are really happy when we can solve these issues that they think, well, this is just how it's going to be. And it doesn't have to be that way. No, which is such a great relief to mm -hmm. know that there's help. It doesn't yeah. have to just be that way. Absolutely. Well, I had a baby and this is just how it is. Yeah. No. And to bring it to you and ask once again, if, and plus if you haven't read it or heard it, if it just enters your mind, mm -hmm. if it's something that you're not concerned about, ask if it can be fixed please what you can do and how nice to know that it can be fixed with exercises it doesn't mean yeah. anything no more surgery mm -hmm. or you're broken uh, you right. can exercise you can do something that's mm -hmm. enjoyable to get back in shape just for yourself your quality mm -hmm. of living because we are living longer yes yeah thankfully uh, thankfully <laughs> yeah it's good so we might as well live it healthy and happy absolutely yeah. so do you advise different exercises for someone who is pregnant for the second or third time that you would have for the first time I'm sure it's still individual but yeah, it's still individual. And I think the most important thing with any exercise program, you have to do what you enjoy. Yeah. And so my wife and I were talking about this today. We love tennis. And so we play tennis together. And again, it's something we do together. It's a family thing. Our kids do it. Um, and my son, who's a tennis player, his, his birthday today. So happy birthday, <gasps> Abram. Happy birthday. And so, uh, but we have friends who hate tennis, <laughs> but we hate running. And so... <laughs> I would never say everyone needs to be a runner because I do not like running. Um, it's something I do because I want, I need to, but it's not something that, so my encouragement for any first, second, third, whatever pregnancy, whatever you like doing, do that. Whatever gets you out, gets your heart rate up, gets you sweating, do that. Great. That's yeah. great advice. Like yeah. you said, you know, it's okay if you hate running yeah. and you find something else you like, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, there's something for everybody. Yes. So what are, now before we close, what are there, are there some local resources for women in Shreveport and Bossier who want to Absolutely. exercise more? What? Yeah. So we mentioned the parks, mm -hmm. your, Perfect. your block right. <laughs> around your house, right. go for a walk. Um, you know, Will Sign has health and wellness centers. They have trainers there. They have aerobics classes, Pilates classes. They have yoga. All these things are healthy in pregnancy and postpartum and in general life. They have pools at all their facilities. So this is certainly a local resource. Many of the gyms have the same things. Um, these are just places that I've worked out before and I've seen pregnant women, I've seen older women, I've seen all ages working out there and benefiting from that. So yeah, it's, you know, even if it's a 24 hour fitness and it's 10 bucks a month, whatever it is, whatever you're gonna do. and, and I, I used to say, yeah, I have a gym membership, but I haven't been in 10 years, so it's not really helping me. So whatever you're gonna do, that's the best place to be. Yeah, but where there is a step two, you buy the membership and then you also have to go. Show up, right? yeah, work. absolutely. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah that's good. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. Well, thanks for having me, it's We been great. really appreciate it, it's been wonderful information. Nice. Uh, is there one last thing quickly that you'd like to leave us with before we go? Oh, goodness. Or just let's leave it with the happy mama, happy yeah, baby. Yeah, healthy baby, healthy mom. That's sayings, the goal. We want baby. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah the best like time to, to exercise is now if All you right. haven't started. I love yeah. that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much again, again. Dr. Phillips. We really appreciate it. And again, happy birthday to Abram. Absolutely. Happy. All right. Enjoy awesome. the rest of your day. Thanks. Everyone, thanks for watching Helpline 3. We will see you next time. Take care.